The surprise American capture of the bridge at Remagen that spanned the Rhine on the 7th of March 1945 has been rightly held as an incredible moment in World War II. Since the collapse of German resistance at the Siegfried Line in early 1945, following several bloody and long attritional battles, the German army had fallen back in somewhat disarray on the last significant barrier protecting the vital Ruhr industrial region, the mighty River Rhine. All the Rhine bridges had been prepared by the Germans for demolition in case the German armies fighting on the river's west bank had to withdraw to the east. The bridges could be demolished to stop the British, American, Canadian and French armies from following them quickly into the heart of western Germany. The Allies had been deliberately attacking Rhine bridges for some time, trying to knock them down in order to prevent a German withdrawal. and prevent the Germans from regrouping and continuing resistance on the other side of the river. But as Allied ground forces closed on the river, this policy was reversed, and if a bridge could be captured intact, so much the better, for it would allow the Allies to quickly establish a bridgehead of their own on the Rhine's east bank. Several major Rhine crossing operations had already been planned in great detail once all Allied forces had closed up to the river when advancing U.S. forces discovered that the huge Ludendorff Bridge at Remagen was still standing. German forces were streaming across it, and the decision was taken to try and capture it by a surprise assault before the Germans could blow it up. Accordingly, on the 7th of March 1945, U.S. armoured infantry and tanks captured the town of Remagen against light resistance and started for the bridge. The bridge commander detonated a huge charge on the approach ramp, creating a deep crater that stopped the U.S. armor, but not the infantry. G.I.s now gingerly moved onto the bridge, but the Germans fired the main detonation circuit to no effect. Something had gone terribly wrong. A partially complete secondary circuit was fired, but the explosion did not demolish the bridge. Under fire from German machine guns in the bridge towers on the east bank, U.S. infantry stormed over and captured the structure and its small garrison. They then scaled the hill above and took out the German flak guns that covered the bridge. Immediately, units were pushed out beyond the bridge, and a small U.S. bridgehead grew on the eastern side of the Rhine, unplanned, but desperately resisted by exhausted and ad hoc German battle groups that were thrown rather uselessly against the Americans. Field Marshal Montgomery in the north and General Patton in the south would launch large Rhine crossing operations, but the Remagen bridgehead distracted the Germans, who moved substantial forces to the region to try and contain its expansion. Hitler ordered the bridge destroyed to impede the U.S. build-up on the east bank. The Germans tried artillery first, a very large number of guns, from 105mm to 12 enormous 210mm howitzers, opened a steady barrage on the bridge area. The bridge was hit many times. On the 8th to 9th of March, for example, German shells struck the bridge 24 times. They managed to close it on the 10th when they destroyed a U.S. Army petrol tanker, causing a serious fire. But from the 11th of March, the German artillery fire began to slacken as the U.S. perimeter was extended, pushing many German batteries out of range. Since the bridge's capture, Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring had decided to be the man of the hour. By March 1945, Göring, the corpulent, drug-addled head of the Luftwaffe, was a joke in the eyes of many, including those in Hitler's inner circle and even his own Luftwaffe generals. Since his failure to win the Battle of Britain in 1940, Göring had achieved some notable failures that had led to his being sidelined.
He had famously failed to supply the trapped German 6th Army at Stalingrad in the winter of 1942-43, despite his grandiose assurances to Hitler that he could. He had famously declared that no enemy bombers could penetrate the Reich, but though his fighters had performed miracles, the Luftwaffe could not stop the US AAF and RAF from turning German cities and industry to rubble. More recently, Goering had lent Luftwaffe support to Hitler's renewed attack in the West, the Ardennes Offensive. During the offensive's stagnant phase on the 1st of January 1945, over a thousand German fighter bombers attacked Allied air bases in an operation codenamed Bodenplatte, or Base Plate. Though they inflicted quite serious damage on the Allies, the Luftwaffe lost huge numbers of planes that they couldn't replace, and many of the remaining experienced pilots and leaders, crippling it for the rest of the war. However, three months later, and Goering saw the Remagen Bridge as a target he was sure could be destroyed. One immediate problem was the seriously weakened state of the Luftwaffe in the West. The specialist bridge-busting Mistel squadrons were on the Eastern Front, blowing up bridges in the face of the Soviet advance there. Units armed with the Fritz X guided bomb had largely been grounded due to the fuel crisis and heavy combat losses. But Goering was not disheartened. The 14th Flieger Division was ordered to fly whatever aircraft were available against the bridge in virtual suicide attacks. The Americans were busily reinforcing the bridge area with mobile anti-aircraft batteries when the first attack came on the 8th of March, whilst the artillery bombardments were underway. The entire flight of three Stukas and one Fokkerwulf 190 shot down. Rethinking their strategy, Goering ordered the employment of new jet-powered bombers and fighter bombers against the bridge. It was envisioned that the new plane's speed would prove a decisive factor in overcoming both U.S. anti-aircraft guns and patrolling U.S. fighters. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Kovalevsky was ordered to form a special attack force consisting of 30 Messerschmitt Me-262A2A fighter bombers and 40 Arado AR-234B jet bombers in what would prove to be the last really significant Luftwaffe operation on the Western Front in World War II. Harassing attacks by Messerschmitt 109s and Focke-Wulf 190s continued while the new jet force entered combat. On the 9th of March 1945, ME-262s made several attacks, and three Arado 234s also attempted to bomb the bridge. U.S. anti-aircraft fire shot down one ME-262 and one AR-234, while out of a total attack force of 17 German aircraft of all types, 13 were shot down. On the 11th of March, 47 German aircraft attacked, 28 falling to U.S. guns. On the 12th of March, the Germans changed tactics again and attempted high-altitude precision bombing, using Arado 234s equipped with an advanced blind bombing system. They all missed. 91 German aircraft of all types attacked the Ludendorff Bridge that day, with the US claiming 26 brought down to their guns. The largest Arado 234 strike occurred on the 13th of March. 19 234s attacked, along with 71 other German types. U.S. flak shot down a staggering 26 German aircraft, including five ME-262s. It was hardly surprising, as the bridge at Remagen had the highest concentration of U.S. anti-aircraft artillery anywhere during World War II. Not one German bomb ever struck the bridge. The Luftwaffe operation lasted for 10 days, until the 17th of March 1945. During that time, the Germans launched 400 sorties against the bridge, losing 140 aircraft shot down, with dozens more damaged, including 18 Messerschmitt 262s and Arado 234s, a very high price for a force that was already on its knees following Bordenplatte and the fuel and pilot crises. At the same time as the Luftwaffe was thrashing away, trying to somehow destroy the bridge, Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler joined in, ordering SS V-2 ballistic missile units to strike the bridge. 
11 V2s were fired from the Netherlands, the closest landing a mile from the bridge. There was also an attempt to use Commando Frogman to attach charges to the bridge supports, but this also was frustrated by heavy US defences on the river. On the 17th of March 1945, the day the Luftwaffe attack ceased, the Ludendorff Bridge, weakened by the demolition charges that exploded on the 7th of March, suddenly collapsed into the Rhine. But by this time the US Army had already erected a Bailey Bridge, a pontoon and a treadway bridge over the river to keep traffic moving, the Germans also failing to hit any of these three additional bridges as well. So ended the last major Luftwaffe air operation on the Western Front of World War II. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.